Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Eric Ten Hag is leading the race to become Manchester United's next manager. Eric Ten Hag is currently the Ajax manager. He's been in charge of Ajax for around five years. He's got a contract with Ajax until 2023. He's won trophies at Ajax. Uh, revert back to 2019, he got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals. Before Ajax, Eric Ten Hag managed Utrecht. Before Utrecht, he managed Bayern Munich's reserves. And before then, he managed Go Ahead Eagles. I like the way Eric Ten Hag develops the youth. I think he'd do very well if he become Manchester United's next permanent manager. Uh, Potocino, he's been persistently linked with the permanent role at Manchester United. Earlier on this season, Brendan Rodgers was linked with a permanent role at Man United. But I initially disregarded Brendan Rodgers. Because uh, Brendan Rodgers dismissed links to the Man United job. He come out and said that I'm proud to be at Leicester. But at one point, this is when Solskjaer was Man United manager, it said Rodgers was house hunting in Cheshire. And that stirred some suggestions up. Revert back to earlier on this season, Roberto Mancini was mentioned. Manchester United are looking for the fifth permanent manager. Uh, Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, Manchester United sacked David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, and last year Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ralph Rangnick. He's Manchester United's interim manager. He's been Manchester United's interim manager for over a month now. Uh, Rangnick's going to be with us until the end of the season. Then it did mention that Rangnick will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. But there again, Rangnick got warned that he could lose the consultancy role if he fails to get Manchester United into the Champions League. Manchester United lost to Wolves last Monday night. That was Ralph Rangnick's first defeat as Manchester United manager and it was the first time Wolves won at Old Trafford since 1980. Uh, 17 players are unhappy at Manchester United and want to leave. Ralph Rangnick has been informed. Before Manchester United, uh, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow. But reflecting on the poor performances under Rangnick, I think Rangnick's blameless. I think the players have to take responsibility. The players are the biggest problem at Manchester United at this moment in time because they are not performing. Rangnick has made changes since he's come in. Um, he's brought three additions in. Earlier on this season, he recommended Ewan Sharpin as an assistant coach and analyst. He also brought Chris Armisen as an assistant coach and he brought Saj Chalens in as a sports psychologist. By the way, Rangnick will be backed by the Glazers in this January transfer window. Rangnick has been told that transfer funds are available this month. Uh, Rangnick, when he first came in, he identified Manchester United's midfield as a weakness. 
There's a lot of players that Manchester United are linked with. Now, Manchester United have recently been linked with Ruben Neves. He said Manchester United are leading the chase for Ruben Neves. Uh, Man United are interested in him. Man United could offer around £35 million this month. It said Wolves are demanding around £50 million. Pounds. Man United have already held talks with Ruben Neves' agent, George Mendes. I'm hearing from sources that Ruben Neves is ready to move on from Wolves and is eager to show his skills at a bigger club. Uh, Neves played against us on Monday night and what a performance he put out. Um, don't forget he had that good chance from the volley. Produced a good save from De Gea. Neves has been at Wolves for five years. Wolves got him back in 2017 from Porto. They paid around £15.8 He's made 178 appearances in all competitions for Wolves. He's got a contract with Wolves until 2024. <laughs> Manchester United have also been linked with Bubakar Kamara. From Marseille, Sky Sports recently mentioned. Uh, Declan Rice, he said not so long ago that Man United are confident of landing Declan Rice in the summer for 100 million. As West Ham's disappointing December has given Manchester United a huge boost in the chances of signing Declan Rice. Uh, you know the news on Julian Alvarez from River Plate. It said yesterday that Julian Alvarez is set to join Man United after Ralph Rangnick held talks with the player's agent this week. He said Alvarez is set to become the first signing of the Rangnick era and Man United are prepared to pay the £17 million release clause to sign Alvarez. Alvarez has been at River Plate for a long time. He's risen up their academy and that. His contract at River Plate expires this year. He's mainly a forward. He can also be deployed as a winner. He's only the age of 21. Uh, we've also been linked with Usman Dembele from Barcelona. Uh, recently there was talks about an Usman Dembele and Anthony Martial swap deal. But I don't want Usman Dembele at Manchester United because he's too injury prone. Man United may make one signing in this January transfer window, but we'll make more signings in the summer than this January transfer window. Players are going to depart the club this year. Uh, Anthony Martial, he will be leaving Manchester United this year. There's a good chance he'll leave in this January transfer window. Now, I'm hearing that Martial is not interested in making a move to Newcastle. It's Sevilla that want Martial. And if Sevilla can improve their loan offer, then there's a chance they'll get him because revert back towards the end of last year... Manchester United rejected a loan offer from Sevilla for Martial. It did mention that Martial's current wages were the stumbling block. Ralph Rangnick last year confirmed that Martial wants to leave Manchester United because Martial held talks with Rangnick over his future and last year Anthony Martial's agent confirmed that Martial wants to leave Man United in this January transfer window. Martial is demanding more game time. He's getting nowhere near enough game time at Manchester United. He's actually out with injury at the moment. He's no longer good enough to represent the club, Martial. The best season he's enjoyed at Man United was his debut season under Louis van Gaal. To be fair, he was pretty good last season. Manchester United paid the initial fee of £36 million for Martial from Monaco back in 2015. Martial's been at Manchester United for around seven years. He's got a contract with the club till 2024 
Marcial has scored 79 goals in 268 games in all competitions. Edison Cavani, he'll leave in the summer because Man United are reluctant to let Cavani leave on a free transfer this month. Prior to the Wolves game, Rangnick come out and said that he's desperate for Cavani to stay at Manchester United until the end of the season. <laughs> you know, Cavani's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Cavani come back from injury not so long ago. It's Barcelona that want Cavani. Uh, last year, it said that Cavani agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. Obviously, Barcelona seen him as a replacement for Aguero because Aguero did retire due to heart problems. Juventus have been in for Cavani as well. And last year, Cavani rejected a move to Boca Juniors. Manchester United got him on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Cavani's got a good pedigree behind him because look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at PSG. Cavani played against Wolves on Monday night. He was playing up top alongside Ronaldo. He was poor against Wolves, Cavani. Played last Thursday night against Burnley. He led the line well in that one but didn't really create anything. Um, he rescued a point in the game against Newcastle towards the end of last year because he came on and scored. The goal was fortuitous. <clears throat> One matter, uh, there's a good chance he'll be leaving in this January transfer window. I think Juan Mata will either go back to Spain or he'll go to the MLS. Mata's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Revert back to last year, Man United extended Mata's contract for the third year. I can't understand why because Mata doesn't really get in the team. Plus, he's lost that yard of pace and he's aging up. But despite that, he's had a good career at Manchester United. He's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored over 50 goals. And he's been at Manchester United for around eight years, so he's been a long-serving player. Manchester United got one Matt from Chelsea back in 2014 for £40 million. Uh, Man United will loan a Mad Diallo out, so obviously he can get his chances. He's not getting enough chances at Man United. You know, a Mad Diallo has played nowhere near as much in the first team as I expected. Made a few first team appearances, but look what we paid for him. We got a Mad Diallo in a deal worth £37 million with add-ons included. Man United paid around £19 million up front. We got him from Atalanta. Jesse Lingard, he'll also be leaving the club this year. <coughs> Do you think he'll leave in this January transfer window or do you think he'll leave in the summer while well, Lingard's contract at Man United expires in the summer? Well, it actually said last year that Lingard will be staying at Man United in January to fight for his place under Ralph Rangnick. West Ham wants to re-sign Jesse Lingard. You know, the second half of last season, Lingard enjoyed a four-month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact. Lingard doesn't get in our team, but he has been part of Manchester United for a long time. He is no power academy in that. Uh, Donny van der Beek, he'll probably be leaving in the summer because uh, I'm hearing that he's not allowed to leave in this January transfer window. Uh, van der Beek wants to leave Man United in this January transfer window. Recently, he held talks with Ralph Rangnick to discuss his future. There again, uh, it says Van der Beek's unable to leave Man United this month because of a bust-up with his agent not so long ago. Uh, Bayern Munich are no longer in for him. Uh, revert back to last summer, Van der Beek was close to joining Everton. You know, Van der Beek's only started one game under Rangnick, so obviously he's unhappy. 
and he didn't get enough opportunities under Solskjaer van der Beek. I thought when we got Rangnick in, uh, Donny van der Beek was going to get the opportunities you know, that he was demanding under Oli, but obviously he hasn't. Van der Beek's only managed to score two goals for the club, and he's been a Manchester United player for over a year and a half now. This season's his second full season at the club. Man United got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract to Man United till 2025 as an option of a further year, and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. <coughs> Matic, he's also going to be leaving the club this year. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his opportunities. Did you know that Matic is only the predominant centre defensive midfielder that Man United have got? I've always had my reservations about Matic because he's always been a static midfielder and he's ageing up and that, but he's had his good games at United. Um he played against Wolves on Monday, didn't he? He was playing alongside McTominay. Um, in the game against Wolves, Matic created the only clear cup chance for Man United and he played against Burnley last Thursday night, did Matic. And I thought he did well in that one. He protected the back far well. <coughs> Earlier on this season, Matic had a call, didn't he? Uh, Matic has been at Man United for around five years. Manchester United got him for £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Paul Pogba, I'm hearing that he's staying at Manchester United until the end of the season. Um, it's already said that Man United are not negotiating a Paul Pogba transfer this month. Manchester United expects Pogba to stay <coughs> in this January transfer window. Despite the midfielder nearing the end of his contract. <coughs> Pogba's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Revert back to the start of this season, he rejected a new Man United contract offer. Rangnick said earlier on this season he won't try to convince Pogba to stay if he wants to go. Pogba's out of a muscle injury at the moment. He's been out of this muscle injury for a while. He got the muscle injury in France training earlier on this season, but the good news is from Man United perspective, he's close to returning. <clears throat> Jones and Bay, I think they're also leaving the club this year. Uh, Phil Jones doesn't really get in the team. Uh, Jones, though, played last Monday night against Wolves. That was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. And what a performance he put out against Wolves. He was the best player, was Phil Jones. The reason he played, though, because Harry Maguire picked up an injury. Jones was at one point was out of a knee injury for a while. Did you know that he's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson area? He's been a long-serving player at Man United. You know, this season is his 11th season at the club. And Eric Bailly, you know, he doesn't really get in the team. Um, he came off injured in the 3-1 win against Burnley last Thursday night. I was surprised that by he started against Burnley. I thought Varane would have started. And Diego Dallo, um, I think he'll be leaving the club this year. And Man United are looking to get rid of Dean Henderson. We need to get rid of him permanently. We don't want to loan him out again. <coughs> uh Ralph Rangnick, though, told Dean Henderson he cannot leave Man United on loan this month. Henderson is looking for regular playing time. <coughs> He's not getting it at Man United because last summer, De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back. Henderson's only made two appearances this season. Earlier on this season, he was out with COVID for a while. Towards the end of last season, he got that number one jersey. And he did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. <coughs> Henderson regrets signing a new long-term contract. Because uh, was it before the start of last season? He signed a five-year contract with Man United with an option of a sixth year. <coughs> and before, he enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield. He's also had other loan spells before with Stockport, 
Grimsby and Shrewsbury. So there you go. <coughs> As you all know, Richard Arnold will become Manchester United's chief executive on the 1st of February to replace Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward is stepping down at Manchester United at the end of this month. It got announced back in April last year that Woodward was leaving the club when that European Super League came into the equation. Ed Woodward um, had, what, a 17-year association with Manchester United. <clears throat> By the way, um, Ethan Laird has gone to Bournemouth on loan. Not so long ago, Tiedem Menge went out on loan to Birmingham. And Axel Tuanzebe, he's going out on loan to Napoli. Or he's already out on loan with Napoli. Now, Manchester United play Aston Villa in the FA Cup third round. It's Monday, the 10th of January, 5-8 to eight kick-off at Old Trafford. It's going to be a difficult game against Aston Villa. Aston Villa have been impressive under Steven Gerrard. Uh, Steven Gerrard has enjoyed a good start to his managerial career at Aston Villa. When Steven Gerrard got appointed in as the Villa manager, he signed a three-and-a-half-year deal. So that means he's under contract with Villa until 2024. Before Villa, Steven Gerrard managed Rangers. He did well at Rangers because he won the Scottish Premiership at Rangers. And before then, he managed Liverpool's under-18s. I think there's a very good chance um, Steven Gerrard will become Liverpool's next manager You know when Jurgen Klopp eventually leaves Liverpool. Uh, before Steven Gerrard, anyway, Villa had Dean Smith. The sats Dean Smith earlier on this season. <coughs> Dean Smith is currently the Norwich City manager. Um, Aston Villa have got some good players in their team that could cause Manchester United problems. One of their best players is definitely Ollie Watkins. <coughs> Ollie Watkins um, is out with COVID at the moment. Ollie Watkins is a former Brentford player. Aston Villa have also got Leon Bailey. He's very good. He's made an impact. Villa got Leon Bailey from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Bailey's out with injury at the moment. Villa have also got Danny Innes. That's made an impact. Aston Villa got Danny Innes from Southampton. I thought Danny Innes was also good at Southampton as well. <clears throat> They've also got Trezeguet, who's good. I think he's out on international duty at the moment. They've got Anwa El Ghazi, that's good. Uh, they've also got Bertrand Traore. Uh, Traore has been out on international duty. <clears throat> they've also got Douglas Louise. Um, I think he's a midfielder. He's good. They've got John McGinn. Um, he's good. Man United have been linked with John McGinn. I think John McGinn is suspended for the league game. They've also got Jacob Ramsey of Villa. They've got Ezri Konsa. They've got Courtney Hawes. Uh, Tyrone Mins. They've got him. He's a very good centre half. Is Tyrone Mins? Manchester United were linked with him a while ago. They've got Sanson. Uh, they've got Ashley Young. <clears throat> He's got a toe injury at the moment. Ashley Young is a former Manchester United player. Ashley Young uh, was a long-serving player at Man United. He was at the club for around eight and a half years. Obviously, when we offloaded him, he went to Inter Milan from Manchester United. By the way, Young's in his second spell at Villa because 
he was at Villa before he came to Man United. Uh, Villa have also got Matt Target and Matty Cash that are quite good. They've got uh, Bowendia, they got him from Norwich. They've got Nakamba as well. Um, he's out with injury at the moment. And one of the goalkeepers Villa have got, <coughs> and that's Martinez. Uh, let me put into the equation that Aston Villa lost Jack Grealish to Man City. He was definitely a key player for Villa, but Villa got £100 million for Grealish. You know, Grealish is Man City's most expensive signing. And like I said, uh, Villa are letting Axel Tuanzebe go out on loan to Napoli. So yeah, uh, next week we play Villa twice within a week, you know, because we've got them on Monday in the Cup and then we play them Saturday the 15th of January. Aston Villa won at Old Trafford in the league earlier on this season, 1-0. That was the first time Aston Villa won at Old Trafford uh, since 2009. And like I updated you on my last video, Manchester United's game away at Brentford has been rearranged to Wednesday the 19th of January. Manchester United were supposed to play Brentford on Tuesday the 14th of December last year, but obviously it got postponed because there was a Covid outbreak at Manchester United. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.